Hey, what's up guys, Arava here, and welcome back to another episode of my F1 2021 My Team Career Mode. This is episode number 90 today, round two at Imola for season six. If you guys did miss the opening episode of this brand new season upload a couple of days ago, then be sure to check that one out before you see this one. And of course, the pre-season video if you've not been clued up on this new season of My Team Career. Because my god, we had a very fiery and tasty season opener. Obviously didn't end ideally as we wanted it to personally with an engine failure to the car and that was actually an energy store failure. So we already know, you know, there's only two components of that you're allowed for the year in the original pool. So we already know probably a lot earlier than we want to, we're going to have to take at least one small five place penalty to get a secondary energy store because we definitely can't make it to the end of the season on on just one fresh one which we now have installed onto the car so that's what happens when you get a, a DNF and an engine failure straight away in the first uh, round of this season. That's happened to us now twice where the opening race have been panning out for us so so well especially this time we were definitely on for a race win potential at least fighting for it and uh, it was taken away from us very much the vibes of those two races last season at Austria and the British Grand Prix definitely got a bit of PTSD when that happened because it was like not again. And once again, George Russell was able to get a decent haul of points over us. This time, though, he's our teammate. So, obviously, I, you know, it's good for the team that he's still got a decent amount of points. But for me, personally, in our own little inter-team battle that I'm sure will brew this season, unless something goes badly wrong for one of us over the course of the season, um, you know, that's already 1-0 to him, then, in this 16 race uh, about. But overall, it was still a very awesome season opener to see, you know, from the outside perspective, you you know, so many different drivers really gained a lot from that very chaotic opener. Lotus Renault especially scoring some very potentially important big points early on in the season in their new black and gold livery. We had Valtteri Bottas on his return to the Silver Arrows winning and maybe putting down a statement that Mercedes are here trying to compete finally once again in the World Championship potentially. We're going to have to see where the consistency lies. And of course, I, st I still think I'm confident that we have a car that's going to be able to put myself and Russell at the forefront. It's just about, you know, reliability and then, you know, the chaos that ha is always surrounding us with the My Team Career Mode season and also a lot of question marks still on other teams. You know, McLaren had a very quiet race, no points on the board. Ferrari with Sainz actually looked pretty competent, actually, so... Yeah, we'll see. Imola, though, is a very different circuit. And, uh, well, the pattern has been Ferrari and especially Red Bull as well, actually, have gone very well around Imola. Last season, our car was pretty decent around here, though, as well. And like I said, this season, more so than last, we're not getting used to the new Porsche power unit. We're not getting used to the car as much. You know, the crossover, the carryover is quite large into this one. So feeling already comfortable. And clearly, Russell showing we have pace there. But like I said, Ferrari and Red Bull right up there. McLaren, though, showing a bit more pace, maybe, with Sonoda and Norris up there. Mercedes a bit on the back foot, along with Williams, Jaguar, both Guan Yu Zhou and Hamilton knocked out. That is a shocker. So we've got our first shock of uh, Saturday qualifying here for round two. Guan Yu Zhou, that, I mean, Hamilton, fair enough, but Guan Yu Zhou being knocked out and the other Williams, that is a real, real shocker there. Just maybe didn't get a lap in traffic, I don't know, but that's such a slow lap, so I would hope for his sake that there was some sort of issue with this qualifying run. So that's already a massive uh, issue for Williams. They're going to have to come back through in the Grand Prix. Potentially, they can try something a bit clever, maybe, with an alternative strategy. It is a track you can overtake, especially in these later seasons, career mode, for sure, with how powerful DRS is and the slipstream is. But here we are, barreling into the beginning of our flying lap. But we are met with a wash of understeer and a very stiff-feeling car, I must say, in that first initial left and right-hander. Compared to our Q1 lap, you can see so much more understeer and just not a responsive car on the front end. Maybe going a little bit too hot, maybe, and eager into the corners, not breaking a little bit early uh, like we did in Q1. But uh, I, I kind of had confidence in the car that it would kind of point in the right way, and it just didn't. So that was a little bit concerning for us that maybe the track is evolving slightly away from us. Uh, it is, though, still with Russell because he's showing some good pace. We've got a couple of cars that are outside the top 10. We're in P6. I felt like we probably weren't comfortable, even though... 
P11 to 12 were a good five tenths off. I think everyone outside that top 10, I thought they were going to have a much better improvement. Although, it is a bit overcast because look like there's some rain clouds warming over. It's not quite raining just yet. And we hardly improve our lap time. We're still P6. So in the end, it's a little bit of a waste for us to go in, you know, basically uh, use a, a set of soft tyres we didn't really need to use just to get up into the uh, into the top two in Q2. We're already through into the top 10 shootout. But you can see a few people like Leclerc had to improve their lap time. So he is through. Leclerc is through. His teammate Gasly, though, is knocked out there. So once again, Leclerc and his new team showing to be showing up is his more experienced teammate in the Alpha Tauri gang. And then Bottas is again knocked out by the Stappen there. Very close margins, though, between the two Mercedes drivers. The Stappen could have easily been knocked out, showing that Mercedes maybe still don't quite have the pace over one lap, but like we saw so many times last season, their race pace was electric. So if it's going to be the same again this season, then qualifying that low still isn't really much of an issue for the Silver Arrows, maybe. A much better qualifying and showing for the reigning world champions, McLaren, Mercedes here, Sonoda up in P6, showing some good pace versus Norris. And then, like I said, the two Red Bulls and Ferraris are there. Historically, in this career mode, in the previous seasons, we've seen those two teams be right up there at the sharp end. But clearly, myself and Russell are in to try and fight for pole position. We've both been up there in both qualifying sessions. Russell especially though. So we need to try and dig deep and try and do well on our one and only lap now as we go a little bit deeper. It's a bit better of a turn in than we had in Q2 there. The front end was a lot more compliant on that second phase of that left right. But uh, this is our one and only lap because we basically wasted a set of tyres in Q2 that we didn't really need to looking at the lap time. So this is it. We're giving everything we've got. Really getting right to the edge of the circuit there on the right hand side flirting with the gravel trap there across the line it is going to be provisional pole position right now but Russell is yet to set his lap time others still on flies but we beat an knock on Verstappen, Sonoda and Sainz and Norris and we will beat Russell here up into first place Russell are nearly about two tens lower than us and then as we go on through this session we've got Norris and Schumacher the remaining guys out on track setting times everyone else seemingly actually did use two tyres as well in Q2. So actually, in the end of it, we do get pole position at Imola. It's a front row lockout for our team, so that is what you want to see. The pace is there with our car, and this is the best position to be in to try and make up for what happened in round one. Schumacher, though, does very well in his Red Bull to be up in P3. Giovinazzi, a howler. I don't know what went on there, but he clearly had some traffic or just a, a big mistake on his, on, his, on his lap because he's down in P3. 10. Schumacher, to be fair, had two runs, whereas I think Gio only had one. So maybe that's why the Germans are able to get up into the second row alongside Leclerc, who's done very, very well indeed to be ahead of the Ferraris, considering his teammate got knocked out. And then Ferraris taking a little bit of a step back. They'll be disappointed because I think they should have probably been a bit higher looking at relative their pace in Q2 and Q1. But obviously we know the track can evolve into the top 10 shootout. But this is the perfect Saturday. We couldn't ask for any more. So let's go into Sunday and see what we can do in round number two. Hello there and welcome back to Imola, home circuit of the Scuderia Ferrari. We expect to see a lot of local supporters in red today. They've all turned out for what we have every expectation of being a sensational event here at the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix, a lap of Imola. Anti-clockwise, of course, unlike most of the Formula One circuits, we'll take our drivers around 3.1 miles of track. 19 turns, nine right-handers and 10 left. Drivers will need to be precise at the hairpin at turn seven, given the subsequent uphill section. Without a good exit from that corner, they'll lose a lot of time on that stretch. Anthony Davidson joins me once again in the commentary box. And it's fantastic to have you with us here today. But I'm curious, as a man with experience out on the track, how do you stop those pre-race nerves from becoming overwhelming when you're lining up on the grid? Well, from the moment qualifying's over, you start to feel the adrenaline in your body build up and the buzz in your stomach as we anticipate the rundown into Turn 1. It's all a bit like going into battle, and the unknown situation makes you nervous. Those pre-race nerves are a good thing. The day you don't have them means that you don't care anymore. And of course, you have to make sure that all the procedures are second nature to you so that they're not taking up too much of your capacity. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. It's the owner-driver in pole position then. 
And starting next to them is George Russell. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Mick Schumacher, Leclerc, Esteban Ocon and Sainz, Norris, Verstappen, Sonoda and Antonio Giovinazzi, Bottas, Gasly, Christian Lundgaard and Stroll, Matsushita, Eilert and Guan Yu Zhou and Jack Aitken, Hamilton, Armstrong, Tigtum and Felipe Drogovic. Which of these talented drivers will come out on top today? The front row of a starting grid. We don't see it too often in our career modes, but it feels very sweet indeed. The only car we can see ahead of us is that red safety car, Bert Mylander. But uh, the strategy today, well, it's going to be interesting because we have some rain, maybe at the end of this race. So I would usually say, I think the one stop's actually the way to go, but potentially setting up a two stop where obviously right now on the strategy screen, the two stop, the second one is for a set of drivers dry tyres, but maybe that second stop will be for a set of intermediate. So maybe worth putting on the medium compound tyre. We've managed a one stop before anyway on the mediums from the soft tyres, but you have to be able to stretch the first stint a little bit more. But if we know the rain is going to be coming, there's no need to maybe stretch the first stint too much. And obviously remember we've seen so many times here at Imola especially that the undercut, especially if you're going maybe two laps earlier than your rivals, can be so amazingly powerful with how quickly the tyres drop off around this circuit so it's going to be a very interesting strategic battle and I'm sure a great one on track as well with our new teammate and of course one of our toughest rivals in this game on the front row alongside us but he's in the same car so that means the stakes are even higher in a way. I think there's only one direction we're going to be aiming for as we go to five red lights for the round number two at Imola in season six and we go straight away to cover off Russell on the right hand side. Russell switches to the left hand side of the circuit. We're deploying ERS all the way down this way into the left hander. Russell though makes contact. We skip over the bump. It's like the staff of the Hamilton in real life all over again from last year. Russell's in the lead though. He made contact as he banged tyres on the front left to his front right. We've survived with no damage to the floor either by going over the sleeping policeman. We're down to P2 then and it all kicked off straight away. Schumacher versus Leclerc. Leclerc trying to go around the outside of the German to get a jump on him. Ocon then in P5. Lando P6. Bottas, Sainz and Sonoda. And Verstappen are your top 10. Hamilton down the order. P17 making contact with one of the BMW. And he's going to have a massive problem getting back to the pit lane potentially from wing off. But no, he's actually completely out of this Grand Prix then. The virtual safety car is called. And he must have parked up there on the left hand side. So what a shame for Hamilton. A lot of you actually noted that he did really well actually to get his way up the order at Bahrain. So, and we've seen his focus go up actually into this season. So there may have been a bit of a resurrection for Hamilton, but not the case now in round number two. That bad luck has uh, uh, well, haunted him once again as he is out now early doors in this race. And now the track is green once more on lap number two. And the end of that lap, on to three, we're going to start chasing down Russell and and trying to get this race lead back from him as we cross the line. It's a purple lap time. Russell gives us no room on the right. He's going to squeeze us right to the line on the left. We're going to push back and try and find some space for ourselves. We're side by side now giving him as much room as we dare without trying to compromise our own racing line. And we're back up into P1. But Russell is giving us a real good fight. He breaks so late into that corner and just keeps it going and tries to hang it through side by side. At some point, you've got to say, if he continues like that, if we continue like this, there is going to be an issue of just holding each other up too much in this race, because Leclerc is not too far away. He's overtaking Schumacher up into P3. Ocon then uh, finds himself being uh, chased down by Lando Norris there, but Ocon going for a move on the Red Bull, and instead backs out of it, and Valtteri Bottas has come out of nowhere to get up into P5. He was down in P11, and he's up now fighting for P5 with the Ferrari. Meanwhile, he 
his teammate Verstappen is still in P10. So what an electric start then in this Grand Prix. We've kind of missed it. It's gone under the radar. But Bottas, last race's race winner, what a start for him. He is literally the flying fin today as he's now going to finish off this move and actually book in P5 ahead of Ocon. Signs now in P7 as Norris goes down the order with that half-attempted overtake as Russell now comes back at us though on the outside in the same place we made the move on him he's going to make a move on us we bang tyres we're literally inches away from making contact but this is a titanic scrap for the race lead on lap four Russell's still going and we're still going to keep our foot in there we're both too stubborn to let this lead go and in doing so Ocon is slowly creeping up towards us because we've had a whole host of people come in for early pit stop Schumacher Leclerc both in as we send it through on the left hander just before going down the hill we had to really slow down the car to make sure we didn't just cream into the sideboard of Russell there but we've kept it clean and we've got the lead back but for how much longer because Russell is just there it's literally like season five all over again all season long remember he was just always so relentless he was so consistent and he's doing the same again today in round two of the season he's trying to now round the outside of the final two corners but we're not having any of it the racing line is the stronger place to be and will retain the lead for now but for how much longer Ocon now is there one of the Ferraris is in play both of them with DRS open out we're a sitting duck Russell on the left Ocon on the right it's three wide for the race lead we're gonna back out that because that was not gonna end well and we actually in doing so play a clever bit of Formula 1 chess on circuit and actually are able to maintain the lead because Russell was so uh, fixated on myself that he just went far too deep, almost took out Ocon and we're able just to switch it and undercut them uh, on the left hand side of that uh, complex of corners and remain in first place. Verstappen meanwhile has actually climbed up into P4. What's happened here then? Sonoda's in P5, Bottas is now P6. At one point Bottas was five places ahead of Verstappen so we've missed something but Bottas maybe made a mistake and went off circuit, I don't know but Verstappen now is the one in charge at the Silver Arrows up in P4 and he's now on the back of Ocon and joined what is now becoming a four-way fight for the race lead. Russell trying to close up on us and Verstappen trying to close up on Esteban Ocon here. It's going to be two by two. Russell on the inside of us. Verstappen attacking Ocon behind. They're swapping positions. We're swapping positions. Can we hold it through? No. No on the outside there but now we're going to have a second attempt on the outside. This is going to have to be very, very touch and go. I think me and Russell are playing a very dangerous game here because we're literally an inch away from making a mistake on one of these curbs or making a mistake with each other in terms of making a kind of potential contact that could cause some damage. But for now, we both kept it clean, to be fair to both of us, and we remain intact as now Verstappen has overtaken Ocon down the hill. The Ferrari has to let go of it, and he's down to P4. Verstappen now in prime position to try and chase after ourselves and watch for, you know, the right time to maybe make a move. He's lurking around like a silver shark with a fin on the back as we're now trying to re-overtake Russell. We sense a bit of a move. <laughs> Oh my god, Russell is cut at this really fine with the defensive there. To be fair to us, we left it very late to swap from right-hand side to left-hand side there. We almost wanted pretty much a crash wish there at that point, but we've uh, somehow managed to survive that and remain intact. And now look at that behind us. Oh my days. Three wide into the left hand and Mercedes v Golf Porsche versus Ferrari and Ocon and Russell are making a little bit of contact. Tire banging and Verstappen now is up into P2. He's doing what he did so many times at the end of our season where he's just being patient, being kind of very un -Verstappen like like he is in real life and just being patient and waiting for the easy move and he's up into P2 now and uh, whilst Russell and Ocon continue to squabble. Meanwhile, Schumacher, Sainz, Norris, Giovinazzi, Bottas all the way down the order because they've all made earlier pit stops as Giovinazzi overtakes the Vodafone McLaren Mercedes of Norris. They're up into P17 
team, but Sainz and Schumacher and Leclerc, they're the big winners here. Remember Leclerc, Schumacher and Sainz, they were all behind us, and now they'll be in prime position because I think Leclerc, I think he pit lap four. So although these guys are very much down the order at the moment, you've got to remember that from pretty much, I think, P6 down to, well, Leclerc, P12, they'll be pitting a little bit later. They're on an alternative strategy outside the top 10, whereas all those guys were fighting with us, were in Q3, and they've gone very early on that two stop, whereas myself, Verstappen, Russell, Ocon, trying to stretch this first stint as much as we can, as Ocon now, oh, goes to the right and then gets blocked off by Russell. Great defense there from Georgie Boy, as Sonoda is doing the same to Guan Yu Zhou and the Williams. Guan Yu Zhou, remember, knocked out in Q1 on Saturday, doing well to be up into P6. He's yet to make a pit stop, though, in this Grand Prix, actually. He's on softs, I've only just realized, as well as Sonoda. I mean, everyone is on softs, it seems like, but we've got a split strategy of either you're stretching that soft tire stint a lot longer to maybe ensure you can do the dry one stop onto intermediates if the rain is going to come later in this race. And then the others, like Leclerc, Sainz, uh, Schumacher, Giovinazzi there as he makes another move on Stroll, they've all gone really early and very aggressive uh, on, on a two-stop. And some of them are even on, an, on another set of soft tyres. So that is quite something for those guys. Meanwhile, for us, we're struggling now on lap eight with that massive lock-up on the front left. So we come in now on lap eight for our first pit stop onto medium tyres. Russell, Ocon and Verstappen continue on, but I could not go any longer. I think the tyres were going to start screaming out a bit. We probably could have stretched it a little more, but the understeer was kicking in, and this is why, maybe. Not the tyres, the front wing needed a change. When did that happen? I didn't feel when that happened, but we needed, we needed a front wing change. So that's maybe why I was feeling some understeer on that lap. So maybe on that final move we made on Russell, Maybe we did make enough light contact to have a bit of damage. There was no visual damage, though. So it's that classic thing we've seen on F1 2021 with simulation damage that visually the front wing has got no damage at all. But actually in the physics, in the data underneath, it's got a little bit of damage. And so it does need changing. So that's a little bit unfortunate for us. So we lose a bit of time in the pit stop there. Down to P16 between Giovinazzi and Norris. But now Jack Aiken's out the Grand Prix. And the full call safety car has been called out. That is so frustrating. That is the worst timing ever for a safety car. We had just made a pit stop, a slow one at that, with a front wing change, and oh my god. Jack Aiken completely taken out this Grand Prix uh, with the, the rear end crash with the McLaren. I think of Sonoda or maybe even Norris. But um, it means now, under the safety car, Russell is in. Verstappen and Ocon and Guan Yu Zhou as well, who actually wasn't too far off these guys. So you've got to remember, Guan Yu Zhou, he was knocked out of Q1. And he's actually only a couple of seconds behind, well, the quote-unquote leaders here. And now he's going to be right there with them, uh, with the safety car bunching us up. But... They all now have a free pit stop. I did not get one. So like Ocon last episode, I've been screwed over with the safety car timing. That was the worst timing for us personally because now you can see, uh, well, Leclerc is leading the race from Sainz Schumacher with those three making an early aggressive uh, two-stop uh, first pit uh, on that four. But uh, Verstappen, Ocon, P4 and 5, Russell, P7. And instead of us being around there, you know, in P6 where Guan Yu Zhou is. Guan Yu Zhou, by the way, has jumped Russell, and Russell got jumped by three cars in the pit stop, so that's horrendous for him, and not great for our team there. There must have been a slow stop for Russell. Uh, we, instead, of, uh, instead of being there, we're all the way down in P12 now, behind Giovinazzi. But we've still got a long way to go in this race, and we do have the potential for some rain as well to mix things up at the very end, so never say never. We can still come back through this, especially with everyone being bunched up now with the safety car. It's kind of, you know, uh, you know, uh, pros and cons. We've lost out because of the bad timing, but also at the same time we're now a lot closer to everyone than, he, than we would have been with that front wing change, of course. So here we go then. We've gone green. Giovinazzi kind of almost caught me a little bit napping at the restart, but we're now going to try and see if we're going to launch one into the left hand. Oh, we thought about it, but Giovinazzi goes for it instead. Oh my god, what a move by the Italian. Up uh, one position on the Lotus Renault of Christian Lunga. Meanwhile, behind Sonoda, 
has span it behind, I think, as he tumbles down the ladder on the left-hand side as we make the move of Lungard as well. Up into P11, Giovinazzi held up by the BMW as Russell goes round the outside of Pierre Gasly. We're having a look at the Italian, but nothing of it. And the Italian will remain in P10 for now, but we're going to try and keep on pressurising him and hopefully both of us can make our way through some of the cars ahead of us and hopefully in the in the end of it we can overtake him as well but we've got oh slow car there Ocon across the curb Russell nearly gets hit by the Ferrari as Ocon has to pull alongside and retire out of this Grand Prix so it's a calamity start to the new season and his new team Ocon two zero point finishes for Ferrari for the start of his season so we now go on to lap 13 chasing down Giovinazzi again can we go for a move this time on the outside no the Italian again maybe is going to have a look on the inside of another car not quite there as the BMW is able to hold it through but we keep on applying the pressure but he is equally still there and holding us up basically at this stage but now Gasly going real slow what's going on here these two are going so 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 we're getting boxed in by the BMW what is going on this corner there's so many issues there's so many drivers at that complex of corners it would seem as we now go on the outside of Masu Sita. Can't quite get the grip though. He's on the soft compound attire. So the BMW legitimately is able to actually outdrag, uh, outdrag us, accelerate us on the corner exit. But in the end of it, we'll have the overwhelming downforce and pace to punch a hole through and punch our way past Pierre Gassi as well as Leclerc is now in for another pit stop. So that's very early. So I wonder if Leclerc has damage or was that just because he went so early on the first pit stop? They had to go so early on this second pit stop. I don't know, but Leclerc's in then from the race lead. But this is what went on then. Whilst we are battling Giovinazzi on lap 13, a replay this is. Sainz has already overtaken Leclerc for the race lead then. And then Verstappen round the outside. I wonder if there's a bit of contact maybe. Looks to be, yeah, there you go. That end plate there just came off Leclerc. So that's why Leclerc has had to make an early pit stop. So that's so unfortunate because the man from Monaco, he was looking like he was maybe fighting for the race win for this race because... You know, he's done so well with the early pit stop initially, but now he's had to make an, uh, a forced uh, secondary early pit stop due to that damage with uh, with Verstappen. Verstappen's also come in, and he's down to P15 then, so he also had damage then, it would seem. And so on lap 14, the top order is Sainz from Guan Yu Zhou, Schumacher, Russell, myself. Then you've got Gasly, Giovinazzi, Norris, Lungard, and Bottas to round out the top 10. And now this is where things get interesting once again, can we try and close up to George Russell? It might be more difficult on this stint, though, because you have to note that he's on the soft compound attire. So Russell has gone for a very aggressive two-stop, whereas myself, we've gone on mediums, because I know that there's a chance of rain. The sky's already getting darker as we see Giovinazzi make an absolutely biblical dive bomb on Pierre Gasly. What a move by the Italian and Gasly now under pressure from the McLaren and Lotus Renault of Lungard. It's great to see Lotus team back in it, getting stuck in actually with these two quote unquote top teams or better teams than they have been in recent seasons. Lungard giving Norris a bit of a fight there in the McLaren, but the McLaren ultimately will go down the inside and maintain that position. But Gasly now, I think maybe Gasly has damage from that move Giovinazzi just made. So both Alpha Tauris are getting screwed over by the simulation damage today as Gasly holds up Norris. And now we can see Bottas is overtaking Lungard. So even though the Lotus Renault is trying to get stuck in. Ultimately, these teams, these other teams have better pace. But as we move on now, lap 15, Russell's getting away from us and he's closing up to Mick Schumacher. Schumacher also on medium, so this is no surprise, but Russell is flying right now in this Grand Prix up into P3 and he'll now set his sights on Guan Yu Zhou who's also on a set of soft tyres I believe so both of those guys are in their own little race here because they will have to surely pit again before maybe potential rain I keep mentioning it because you can see the skies are darker it's generally a lot more overcast as now Norris and Gasly are both in Gasly with front wing damage and Norris maybe also as well because I don't know the re reason why the McLaren drive 
driver is pitting this early because even with even with the soft tyre runners, I would say they're going to pit around lap 18 or 19. So they've still got a few laps to go as Giovinazzi continues to make a charge. He's now made his second pit stop onto mediums. Although, to be fair, actually, Giovinazzi didn't have damage and he's made a pit stop. So maybe actually they are just going that early. But the thing is now, it's, it's overcast. The rain is maybe on the way. We've been told the forecast is there for it. So all these guys who have made this pit stop, what they don't have, the advantage myself and Schumacher have, is we're on mediums that can go a little bit longer. Maybe, just maybe, we could stretch this tyre till the wet period because science is in. He was also on a set of softs. So my, myself and Schumacher were the only guys who went a bit different on this two-stop strategy onto mediums. We fly past the Red Bull man up into P3. We're 1.3 seconds behind Russell, but he is pulling away and chasing after Guan Yu Zhou. He's just set the pass up the Grand Prix as well. So uh, literally, Russell is flying in this race and he's setting down some purple lap times to try and chase after that purple and grey car of the Williams Jaguar Grand and you, Joe, but these two, they're surely going to have to come in sooner rather than later, and that's going to be before any potential rain, and so I'm really hoping and counting on being able to pit in for intermediate rather than coming in for dry tyres, first of all. In terms of everyone else, well, actually, Schumacher on lap 18, strangely enough, he's come in already, so he's wasted that medium tyre, in my opinion, because you could definitely go a little bit longer and just wait to see when the rain is going to start falling because I think it's pretty much uh, in imminent because uh, of how dark it is now compared to just a few laps ago. But we've got Sainz, Schumacher, Giovinazzi, Verstappen, Leclerc, Norris, and then Valtteri Bottas. So all those guys have made their final dry tyre pit stop. And now it's just about their race pace on the respective dry tyre they're on. Some of them on hards like Gasly and uh, I believe Leclerc as well, maybe. And then some of them on mediums like uh, up the order, Sainz and Schumacher and uh, Verstappen as Gasly flies past the BMW car, and we can see Norris actually is on soft tyres, I think that may have just been, red wall on the McLaren no, yellow, yellow, so mediums for the McLaren then, so got a bit of difference here some people going for the hard tyre, some people going for the mediums, but for the people on hards, I just don't, I mean obviously some of them had to pit for damage, but some of them, they've just kind of thrown away the strategic advantages they may have had being on a better tyre earlier and that's mainly with Schumacher to be honest, because I, I just think on lap 20 is now now, Russell and Guan Yu Zhou are in, off those soft tyres, they can't go any longer, because those tyres will fall off the cliff, they're in for a set of medium tyres now, surely, to the end of the Grand Prix, but... Will it be the end of the Grand Prix? Because rain is starting to fall, I think, at this very moment. It's hard to tell because it's very, very light at the moment. But give it a few laps and we'll start to see some rain on the camera potentially. But in terms of that fight then, those are people that have made a second pit stop already on dry tyres. You've got Sainz in the lead of that pack then, having gone a bit earlier. Guan Yu Zhou in second, Russell in third. You've got to say, those two will now start climbing closing up to Sainz because Sainz will face a bit more tyre wear earlier on than those two. Then you've got the two Red Bulls who are doing their own thing in clean air, trying to chase off the, uh, those uh, three cars. Then Verstappen, Norris just ahead of Leclerc. Those two swapping positions left, right and centre. Then Bottas and Gasly a bit further back down the order. Lap 22 though now. Ten laps to go. Guan Yu Zhou is making a move for second place and we are still not in from those medium tyres and now the rain is falling. Look at that. A little bit bit of blurriness and drizzle on this camera as Guan Yu Zhou is up into second now and Sainz's tyres are already falling away a bit so Ferrari again showing that you know Sainz actually may have a, had a great start to the season but that Ferrari is still very harsh on its tyres as we cross the line lap 23 now our pit stop window opens for our dry tyre strategy so that's why I'm very surprised Schumacher went and pitted on lap 18 unless he had damage I don't know why he pit that early off me because this is now the lap you would pit on if it wasn't raining but it is raining and you can see the droplets are actually on our screen so we're actually in a very frustrating position strategically because if we were to pit now onto softs we could do that but the thing is then if it starts raining worse and it's time for intermediates you know in a lap or two's time 
we're going to look like an absolute idiot by pitting for that set of soft tyres. So we have to, oh, we're, we're almost forced now to stay out and try and pray we are actually all going to go to intermediates. And if not, then we're trying to do a near impossible task of taking these mediums all the way to the end of the Grand Prix. But that is where we're at strategically because now it's far too late in the day to pit on for that th third set of dry tyres because it is raining enough where, you know, if we did that, you, we could risk being caught out by then having to come in straight away for intermediates the next lap. But the rain continues to fall and it still looks like it may be into in lap or two's time, but we're losing tyre grip as well on the rear end. Look at the bottom right then, the icon indicating we're now well within the puncture region and we've still got so many laps to go. But unfortunately now, we are committed. Guan Yu Zhou is only 15.4 seconds behind, so we are now committed. If we want to win this race, we have to stay out now, but it's getting worse and worse, and now we lock up, and we nearly deck it, we go straight on, and cleverly just let off the throttle, let the car roll across the gravel, not to try and spin up the rear tyres, and spin into the wall, and we just about managed to somehow keep the car going, and survive, but now the tyres have got all sorts of grass and gravel on them, on lap 26, and conditions aren't getting any better, it's still raining, and and my tyres are still wearing out. So this is becoming a challenge and a half. We've got now about 10 seconds to the Williams man in second place. Then a further 7 to Giovinazzi Schumacher. Leclerc and Norris continue to swap positions here. And George Russell is all the way down in P13. Along with Max Verstappen in P16. Because those two had to pit again. Because they got damage on each other by fighting too much. And I think it's maybe the same for Carlos Sainz. I'm not sure. He comes in for a pit stop as well. This is, uh, we've actually counted back a few laps now, lap 24 just to show you why people are down the order. And this is where Giovinazzi got Schumacher. Brilliant overtake by the Italian on his German teammate up into P3. But yeah, Russell and Verstappen basically were fighting each other too much and must have made contact somewhere. And with simulation damage not only a challenge for myself over the course of the season, the AI also have to face simulation damage. And so those to have taken themselves out of the running for the top five and so Leclerc actually finds himself fighting for P5 with Norris despite uh, you know facing the same calamity basically earlier in the season and you can see now though from our onboard lap 29 we are very much struggling for grip here it's a combination of the tyre wear and the rain collecting a little bit on these curbs we're having to go very cautiously in sector one and having to go opposite lock a little bit and counter steer just ever so slightly at every corner just to keep the car going in a straight line. Lap 30 now. We've got three laps to go, including the one left here. And Guan Yu Zhou is now here. He has arrived out of nowhere. He's closed the gap up. We're defending though as hard as we can. No contact made. Just some harsh defending and stern defense from us on the inside there to keep first place. If he wants to overtake us, he's going to have to actually put some work in. We're not going to make it easy for him, but you know he's got the advantage obviously of fresher tyres. Uh, but, you know, we are now committed right to the end. And it's a question of not only can we keep all these cars behind. Guan Yu Zhou, Giovinazzi only three seconds down the road with Schumacher. But can these ties even go the distance? Because we could be well near 100% tyre wear by the end of the race. I'm not even joking. So this is going to be a miracle if we pull this off. As we now head on to the last lap of this Grand Prix at Imola. And the top four are covered by one second. And look at our tyre tyres on the right hand side, 84% tyre wear, this is going to be difficult, Guan Yu Zhou on the inside, we defend, he goes over the kerb, we also do as well, but we've just about managed to keep it in P1 somehow, as we tighten up the corner for the Chinese driver and remain in first place, and now you've got Giovinazzi and Schumacher squabbling for amongst themselves for P3, but they could also get stuck in, as now the Williams is going round the outside, you can see on the track surface the rain is settling a bit, and so the Williams driver goes wide due to the slippery nature of the track now. Again, he goes, he's on the outside. We just hold the racing line and Guan Yu Zhou goes wide. And there goes Giovinazzi though. The Red Bull cuts in tighter on the inside and gets the double overtake for the race lead. As we go over the curb, we lose the rear end opposite lock and we narrowly, narrowly catch the car. But the Williams is passed as the second Red Bull goes through. We lock up on the front right and that is it. The nail in the car. The tyres are done. 
they are done. Giovinazzi has made a last lap overtake, a double overtake, to go on to win one of his home Grand Prix here in Imola. And now our rear right tyre is our 100% tyre wear, and the puncture has happened. There it is on the line as we go to the finish line. We're going to skate through for P4 and spin it across the line. Oh my god. One of the weirdest ways to finish a Grand Prix ever. Spinning backwards across the line. And we finish dead on the line with three wheels on our wagon. But it is P4. We risked it all for P1. But we get P4 instead. It's a performance that our Emilia Romagna Grand Prix winners can be justifiably proud of. And I'm sure there'll be celebrations tonight. Tell me, Ant, how do you think they were able to deliver such an incredible result today? I think the key here was just the quality of the racecraft, you know? I mean, how many overtakes did they make overall? I'm sure we have a stat person keeping score somewhere. And it was fantastic to watch, wasn't it? This is a strategic sport at the end of the day, but it's always really gratifying to see close fought battles on track. It's what all the fans are after. Red Bull put up an outstanding fight for the front position today, and it's great to see it paid off for them. They do so much for the sport that you can't help but be delighted by today's race win. You've got to say it's a great, great race win for Giovinazzi. The man who had a shocker on Saturday qualified P10. One point was it three seconds off pole position and he's won the race. It's a double Red Bull podium. Guan Yu Zhou as well, got to say, from P17. What a drive by the Chinese driver in the Williams Jaguar to take P2. We risked it all. We were in a very weird position. Like I said, you know, by the point we got to lap 20, what was it, 21, 22, we were pretty much between a, a rock and a hard place because whatever we did, we could have been, you know, tripped up. If we had pit for softs and then it rained more, we could have been in disaster territory by making an extra pit stop that was unnecessary. And instead, we just kept it going, tried to get the race win, in the end get P4 and 12 points on the board to kick off our season following our DNF at the Bahrain Grand Prix. It's better than nothing and we still actually beat our teammate Russell and beat quite a few of our rivals, to be fair, as well, with that strategy. So it's not a complete calamity. And, you know, sometimes in racing, you just got to go for it, roll the dice. And we did it, and it didn't pay off today. Fair play to Giovinazzi. you got to say Red Bull now kickstart their season. But Mercedes don't look too bad as well in second place right now. Williams as well catapult themselves up into P4. And the reigning champions, still not great. They get points on the board, but they're still only down in P9, the constructors. So it's been a very odd first two races indeed for the Constructors' Championship and indeed the drivers, but we won't really talk too much about the patterns yet. It's too, it's far, it's still far too early right now, but what a chaotic race. It always is when there's some rain involved, and it, it always is at Imola as well. If you guys did enjoy, hit that like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're new around here, then do get subscribed for weekly full-on content, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.